everyone, it's Doris here. Welcome back. Hi everyone, welcome to church. My name is Jack. Hey guys, welcome to Encounter. My name is Marcus. Hello everyone, welcome to Encounter. It's great to see all of you this week. Hi church, welcome to Encounter. It's good to see all of you. Hey Church, it's great to have you here with us. Hey guys, welcome to Encounter. So great to see you guys here this week. My name is Todd. You may see me around church, standing there, all alone, needing things. But please come and say hi, if you are new to Encounter. Oh. Hi right, everyone, so good to see you guys here. I'm just uh, trying a bit new things, uh, doing countdown in-house as well, on site. Uh, I feel like things are always changing these days, and uh, I purposely brought Ilya up because I know for sure that Babies brings ratings up and view rates as well. So Ilya is here to say hi to everyone. And speaking of things changing, you know, uh, weather has been changing all over the place. And I mean, last week COVID was eliminated, and this week COVID resurfaced and made its way back. And now sitting here, you guys are wondering, you know, like, what is going on? What's the PowerPoints? on the side as well, like nothing is where it's supposed to be, everything is changing. But I guess, thank God, you know, our hope is anchored in Jesus, not the position of the projectors or anything, and even the world around us may change. Uh, we are secure, we are assured in God and in His love for us, and that His love for us is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So I just want to encourage you guys, maybe just stand up a bit right now. Maybe you can occupy the spaces up here, up, up closer to the front as well. Is that okay? Is that okay? Is that, everyone's like, no, don't make us move. Don't make us move. All right, well, changes is happening, and I want to encourage us, you know, let us, let us fix our eyes on Jesus tonight. Let us together encounter God uh, his love and His power. And we're going to start by having a time of worship through song and music. And uh, so Eli and his team will lead us to uh, worship here tonight. Welcome to church, everybody. And to those tuning in at home too, welcome to you. Um, how about we stand? My job description is to uh, lead you to worship. And I think what that means for us is we want to point you to Jesus. We want you to um, fix your eyes on Jesus. 
And it's hard to do because when you come in from a busy day, um, you've got things all up in your mind. Um, but you know, this song talks about how we approach the throne of glory with nothing in our hands because there's nothing we can bring to the King. He's got it all. And so we can just show up with our hands open and uh, that's all He wants. He just wants us with our hands open, ready to receive, ready to surrender to Him and to receive. So church, let's fix our eyes on Jesus. Let's fix our eyes on our King. Let's look forward to what He has to offer us tonight. Let's worship Him. I approach. I approach the throne of glory. Nothing in my hands I bring, but the promise of acceptance from a good and gracious.
Jesus, God, we fix our eyes on you. Lord, we just thank you that we can come, Lord, with our hands open, that you would embrace us, Lord, that you, you're not just a God who's far away. You're not a God who's seated high on his throne. God, we thank you that you came down to us. Even when you didn't need to, God, you didn't need us. But Lord, you came down and you washed our feet. God, you say that you know us by name, that you know the number of hairs we have on our head. So God, we just want to fix our eyes on you. We want to give you praise and thanksgiving. We want to worship you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Sing what love, my God. What love, my God, would bring you down to earth. What king will take a low and lonely bird? Yet to this dark and broken place you came To sleep beneath the stars that you had made Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, Father God, I just pray for people here, Lord, who come with anxious hearts, who come with burdens. Father God, that is not from you. Father, I pray that you help us to fix our eyes on you. That because you came, because you overcame the world, we can have hope. That we don't have to worry about tomorrow. Because we have a Father in heaven who is for us. Church, God is for you. Do you know that? He's your Father, and He's for you. And He offers you peace. He offers you love. You're not here by accident. You are no mistake. He's called you by name. He knows you. He knows what you face. He knows your weakness. But he's for you. And you can hope in him. That he's going to make things work out for the good. Because you hope in him. That he's going to make a way for you. Because you hope in him. That in every situation, every circumstance, you can hope in him. Because he's overcame it all. Even, even death, he has overcome. So let's trust in him. I will trust my Savior Jesus when my darkest doubts befall. Trust him when to simply trust him. Seems the hardest thing of all. I will trust my Savior Jesus. Trust Him when my strength is small. For I know the shield of Jesus is the safest place of all. Trust. 
Lately, um, at home, Aliyah is being very tricky at night. You know, I just don't want to sleep and doing all these things. And and Yixing is actually the one to bear the burden. She has to sacrifice so much for her. And, and I recall just worshiping. I just thinking about the verse um, in the Bible that that kind of says, "If our earthly father or mother or parents know how to give good gifts." For their children, how much more would our Father in heaven give good gifts for His children? And because, 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 as parents, we're just talking about uh, just about you know what do we do, how do we teach her, and how do we and do all these things. And in our conversation, really, we're just thinking about just how much we love her, and and she has no clue, no clue, just how much. Her parents, right now, Ishi and I are just loving her and doing our best to love her. And I just feel like tonight, you know, God's just gonna show so many of you how much He loves you, and it's just gonna come out kind of as a surprise because you've never ever thought or conceived that there could be a love this way of this magnitude in this capacity. But God, our Father in heaven. How much more does He love you? I just feel like God's just gonna surprise some of us tonight and just be like, "This is how much. This is how much I love you. Not just that I love you, but I have been loving you this much, and I will forever keep on loving you this much, this much, this much." Lord, we thank you. When we come here, we come here with hope. We come here with strength. We've come here in faith because we can trust that all that you have done on the cross for our sins, you have made a way, a way of life that we can come and say, "You are Abba, Father, and you love us, Lord, and we can receive your love." So, Lord, increase us, increase our faith, increase our knowledge, so that we may come. To comprehend, to grasp, to understand this unlimited love that is from you, although we're limited in our ways to understand, but God, how much more you have for us, church. Today, let us just keep drawing in, just pressing into that love to our Lord, for our Lord, from our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, and pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Please be seated. I just want to say, you know, welcome, welcome to church. Whatever, just like whatever burden, whatever you know, baggage you might be carrying with you today, you know, 
So it's all going to be okay because God is real. God is true. He is alive and is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And for those of you online, we welcome you as well. And you might be wondering, you know, Encounter Church is so active online in your comments because we're, we have a new thing going on that is a host. And Devin, behind her screen, just typing away, enjoying herself, greeting you and welcoming you. She's saying hi. And if you have any question, anything you want to ask, ask her. If she doesn't know, she'll be honest. And she said, I don't know. I'm new to this job. Job. No one gives me an instruction. I have no idea what's going on. And for those of you you're on site, you know, I always feel like we're so disconnected with the people online now. Now we're here, but they're, they're here and sometimes they actually say, hi everyone, we're so excited we're here with you, but you have no idea because we're not there. So if you have, you know, if you have a bit of your data left, if you are not connected to Wi-Fi, but you just want to say hi to our friends online, you know, you can just join in and just say hey everyone we love you and actually angie's doing it right now and that is amazing you know because as a church when we come together and we come together in different ways but we are one family so uh, if that if you if you are willing to sacrifice some data uh, just go on there and say hi and otherwise i wonder if there's anyone new or returning from somewhere that we can welcome you i haven't I was going to say I haven't seen Elia in church for a bit, but now she's gone again, so I can't really welcome her right now. But uh, so good to see all of you and uh, from whatever place you are. And actually, I'm very encouraged because it's so cold. Sometimes I wonder in cold weather like this when I come to church, but you are here and uh, you're here greeting one another. So I'll just cut to the chase. I'll let you guys warm up the hearts of everyone else by just greeting one another. If you haven't been online, just go on and greet them as well. Why don't we just stand up, church? Why don't we greet one another? If you're also online, just shower the people online with some emoticons. Give them the care emoticon. Just keep tapping those things, just flooding it if you're online, just to say, I'm giving you a hug. I'm giving you a handshake as well. And uh, if you're online with us, comment where you're watching from. If you have friends or family with you, why don't we just spread this love around this place? And this is amazing. So good. So good. David is super enjoying you guys saying hi to him. He's just flooding the screen uh, with uh, the care emoji as well. And, uh, you know, church, why don't we just continue to keep on praying uh, for the Wong family, for Ethan, and just pray that God will continue to heal him and recover him, that the result that is to come back is going to be great. It will bring joy and hope to the family as well. And, you know, we're a church family, and we're here to support them as well. We're here to support you, David, Serena, and Devin, and Ethan as well. We love you guys. We can't wait for you guys to come back as well with us. And for Jonathan, Esther, Eddie, and Pei, uh, who are just with their babies uh, at home, we would love to see them. We love to see Zach and Aiden coming to church as well, blessing them and joining the family. Um, a few announcements. It is uh, for, our, for our offering later on as the church new goes on. There's a box at the back because we just want to limit the transferring of like the bags and all these things. There's a box at the back. If you like to go old school cash offering in the envelope, you can put it in the box at the back. Uh, but otherwise, we still want to encourage you to use the online facilities just to give online and uh, with the instructions for your offering number and everything as well. Uh, but otherwise, you know, church, why don't we turn to our screen? attention to the screen for church news
Hi Encounter Church, this is a sharing session in which you have been nominated to appear in front of camera and to share what Bible verses has inspired you recently. Today, Kelly and I will get the ball rolling by sharing our verse and why it has inspired us. I think the Bible verse that stood out to me this week the most is from Book of John, chapter 11, verse 25 to 26. So it says, Jesus said to her, the her over here is Martha. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives will, by believing me will never die. Do you believe this? I think this verse stood out to me a lot because if you read the context of John chapter 11, um, it's about Lazarus. So Lazarus is a brother of Mary and Martha, and then he was dying. And Martha sent people out to, you know, trying to get Jesus to come over to make her brother feel better or just recover. But then Jesus either come straight away. And um, when Jesus came, which is two days later, um, Lazarus already passed away. And Martha was really sad. And that is when Jesus said to Martha, I think it's quite important that we know Jesus' timing. And... Um, and I think a lot of the time we struggle with this, you know, we will want things to happen at the time we want, but it doesn't necessarily is God's timing. So yeah, so I think it's just want to encourage we um, all of us to, you know, to think about this and link back to the other verse that I think is quite relevant is from book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verse eight to nine. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, Neither are your way my ways, declared the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my way higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Yeah, that's all from me. What I'm going to share is, is in John as well, because we did uh, John chapter 11 to 12 in our life group recently. Then Thomas, also known as Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, Let us go, that we may die with him. How does this apply to you in your life? Doesn't mean that Jesus asks you to jump off the cliff and die with him or for him. Um, he 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 want he just wants you to follow him. Doesn't mean that you did your job, your normal job, your daily life. No, it's I think it it how it resonates to me is you still follow him despite having all that, with the possibility of bringing Jesus to work. Um, I think the Bible is the mirror for our hearts. So really, and Jesus said he doesn't, or the God said he doesn't care about appearance or whatever, he cares about the heart only. So this really asked me, um, how am I following Jesus in my life? And I think this is something that everyone should think about. Are we doing it right? Or are we doing it how Jesus wants us to do it? 
We are looking forward to your verse, which inspired you recently. So let us know when you are ready. Church news this way. Let's prepare our heart for the message. All uh, right. Thank you for my interest. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you very much. No, that was really great. Um, I know, I know all of you guys. Uh, in some ways, you have been uh, just reading the Bible, studying your life groups. And if there's a verse that has been inspiring, encouraging you, you want to share, that's a great way to do it. Uh, because someone out there in the interweb as well, you know, it could encourage them and uh, do a lot of good in their lives as well. So see one of the amazing ECM crew that you saw them during the welcome video as well, and uh, they can hook you up and to share and encourage other people in your lives as well. Um, so yeah, today, I don't know how good the, you know, the resolution, how well people can see it online, how good your eyesight is, uh, but I have a few things on my ear here, uh, some dots, it's not because of, you know, skin cancer, or I have like midlife crisis, just like to do like piercing and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I went to the acupuncturist and um, actually her, her, her place of work is actually called the acupuncturist. I went to the acupuncturist and basically she wants to try new things and there's like pressure points on your ear that's linked to like my neck and my back and something. So she put dots there so I can like massage and anything. So anyway, if you didn't notice and now you're just like distracted by all that, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But, uh, <laughs> but otherwise, uh, let us just continue to focus and uh, why don't you turn your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 6 verse 16, sorry, Hebrews chapter 4, chapter 4, verse 16, and uh, we have it on screen as well. So it says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. And we'll be on this here about let us. And, and the, first of all, the idea of coming together, being together is so important in our time of need, isn't it? I'm sure many of you, you have been benefited by the company of loving and supportive people in your lives and your time of need as well. And when we read this, it totally makes sense. You know, let us in time of need. Yet the Bible is showing us something even more important than just the mere coming together and gathering together as well. That is, in our coming together, it needs to be leading to this coming to God together. It's not just about a coming together in our time of need, but it's a coming together to God. Because only in God is there mercy and grace that we need to help us in time of need. The support, the encouragement, the comfort, the company that we have in our lives are such a blessing to us. But, but no one can give mercy and have this ample of grace like our God, like our Father. So as we enter into the kind of the fourth, I think it's the fourth, fourth episode of the Let Us series, we've been constantly reminded that many good and godly instructions have been given to us as a community, rather than us as just individual uh, collections of individuals going around, but us as something that is linked, that is connected, that is joined together. And we, we start to see that this is because this is how God created us to be. We're created for community. We're created for one another. And you are created to live in community and to live for one another. And this is the series, Let Us. But not only are we created to be together, we're created to be together towards God, for God, and coming to God. And I just want to... I don't know, I know they don't want the attention, but John and Nessa just came in with Aiden and we're so excited. You know, why don't we just, yay, welcome then to church. I haven't seen you guys for so long. I know all you guys online were just hoping we can pan the camera over there and all that. Too much hassle. Um, we'll try and find ways to do it so some other time. 
So, like I said, you know, we're created to be together, but not only that, we're created to be together to God. And that's what we've been seeing as well, you know, when we look at Mark 6, let us rest. This rest is in Jesus. This rest is being with Jesus. It's about God that we come together for. And in one, the ch- uh, 1 John chapter 4, when we look at let us love, let us love with love that comes from God. When we get people together to encourage and all that to love, it's because love comes from God. When Hebrews 10, it tells us to let us gather, to be encouraged in the present, but it is in light of the future that is promised in God. So all this coming together, there's a goal of it that is coming towards God. And today we're looking at let us come. Let us approach. Let us come to the to God's throne of grace in our time of need. And I wonder, just to start it off, when was the last time you feel stuck in a place? When was the last time in your life you you call it a time of, of need? And I'm not just talking about having some difficulties and struggles of our daily life and all these kind of things. I'm I'm really talking about you finding yourself in a situation where where simply you are not sufficient. Right? There's nothing more you can do and you are in a time of need. When was, when was the last situation that you can think of that, that you feel like I can say, I am in a time of need? Why don't we just jolt our mind and think about it a bit? And for some of you, 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 you might honestly say, wow, I've never felt that way. I mean, thank God. Because you are blessed if you never felt that way. And I don't mean it in a sarcastic way, but seriously, 100%, you are blessed if you haven't found yourself in that space yet. And I say yet because what life will do in, in, to us is that one day uh, we will see that. And I pray that this message will come back to help you in the future if that happens as well. But think about the last time you were in a time of need. For me, um, it really goes back to 2017, two and a half years into pastoring encounter. And it happened when I was uh, taking a holiday and I was spending time with my family up in Auckland. Uh, My parents were there, my sister, brother-in-law, the whole family was there. Um, and And I received a call I would never forget. And even right now, as I think back to it, I can still feel it. You know, I can never forget that because I received a call that just changed uh, my world. From, uh, for, for a long time, it changed because it was a call that says a young person in our church had took her own life. And it really didn't take me long to realize this was a time of need in my life because I have absolutely no idea what to do, what I should do, how I should think, how I should feel. Everything was a mess. In fact, I go to my senior pastor, Pastor Jack, and he said he hasn't experienced this in his 30 years of ministry. So, so there I was up in Auckland, and, and my heart is, was super unsettled. And, and my wife, Asian, she wanted to support me. She wanted to encourage me. But she didn't know where to start, how to start, you know, I didn't even know how she could because all this was just too, I don't even know how to think. And and, and then slowly my mind was just going going on just thinking about, man, I I need to, I I need to find out what I, what I need, what I should do, what I can do for for the many young people who are hearing this right now, affecting by, uh, I need to find someone who can help us through this, this time of grief together as a church. I I need to, I need to provide a space where the people who are affected can, can be together. I, I, I need to, I need to find ways to change the service this weekend and, and I was just all going on and coming back to Christchurch. You know, I need to talk to the family. Um, I need to support the affected. I need to learn how to lead a funeral. I need to plan funeral and somehow get people to help out when everyone is super affected and confused and hurting with all this. And it was just going on, on and on in my mind. It was just flooding through it. And I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do it. And over that two weeks, uh, for, for about two weeks of time. The, the, help, the, the help I thought I needed was some experienced people to, to guide us and walk us through this. 
was to have the, the willing hands to, to help plan and prepare uh, for, for a funeral that all of us are too young to even attend one. Well, I, all I thought I needed was someone to help me unpack this experience as a, as a young pastor. You know, all I thought that I needed was a clear mind and a strong heart to carry the church through this unprecedented time. See, I wonder, like, in your time of need, what goes on? Because often the first challenge is understanding that what you think you need might not actually be what you really need need. And what do I mean by that? See, the help I thought I needed, as I just listed, was one thing. The help I actually needed in my time of need, the help that you would actually need in your time of need, the help that we would actually need in our time of need is to receive mercy and find grace. As it says, let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. See, the Bible is flooded with these two words, mercy and grace, mercy and grace, mercy and grace. And because mercy and grace is the two most prominent pillar of love, the, the, mo- the utmost attributes of love. And, and if we have a lopsided, unbalanced understanding of mercy and grace, our understanding of love can never be full. And our capacity to give and receive love would be affected as well. So, so what is mercy? What is grace? In, in some way, mercy is often translated and used as uh, pity, or or compassion, and and it is this compassion um, that someone has to withheld from you a deserved punishment. All right, someone with the power and right to punish for the wrongs that you have done that you deserve, but it is being withheld, and that is the compassion that leads to the action of withholding this punishment, and in a way that is how mercy is understood. So, so to understand mercy is to be willing to see ourselves as one who does have wrong, is in the wrong, and actually because of that, deserving some kind of punishment or some kind of actions taken because we are in this wrong. It's actually able to say, I am wrong and I am deserving of something. And in this case, love uh, is expressed when mercy is given in a way that forgiveness is provided instead of the said punishment. And grace, on the other hand, is also translated and used as kind of the word favor. Um, It it is the act of providing uh, a good to the other party who does not deserve this good. It's a favor that's given to them when uh, they do not deserve it and freely given. It is, it is a favor given in a way that, that costs, but without a guarantee or an assurance of something in return. So in a way to understand grace is to be willing to see ourselves as one that has no right to or, or, or to be entitled for certain favors that we think we should have in our life because it is freely given to us in our lives. And that is this term of like favor and grace, undeserved, that is in our lives. So, so love in this case is expressed um, that was, was for grace is when favor is found unexpectedly. So in a way, mercy and grace. Mercy is to not receive the punishment that is deserved. And grace is receiving a favor that is not deserved. And when we... What we really need in our time of need is not just a solution uh, to, to make the problem go away. That is great, but sometimes it doesn't resolve a deeper, deeper issue that keeps us in a place of need. See, what we really need in our time of need is to be forgiven of the wrong that is indeed in our life, in our part in the situation. And sometimes we need to be forgiven of that wrong that we continue to hold over us and hang ourselves over this situation and this punishment that we think we deserve. And also in the same time, be given the favor to restore and overcome the situation that we are in. 
What do I mean by that? You see, the months after this, this, this incident, all I can honestly think about is actually how I could have, should have done more. You know, how, how as a pastor, I wasn't able to see the signs. And perhaps I saw some signs, but I didn't have the courage to, 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 to act on it or the wisdom to act on it. You know, how I allow my insecurities, perhaps, to stop me from approaching her and understanding her situations of life. And many, 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 many more. It just, it just goes on. That's, that's how, I, how I thought about it, how I think about it. Am I wrong in it? And in our culture today, the moment I say these things, if I ever had the opportunity to say it to you guys at that moment, all of you, I can guarantee 100% of you will be very quick to immediately say, don't think that. You can't think that. That is wrong. It's not your fault. It's not your responsibility. And we say that because of our love, of encouraging, of being supportive. We don't want uh, someone we care about to just go down a certain spiral. And, and that is great. And that is amazing. And super, super encouraging. But... All right, but, and I just want to say this, I reckon sometimes it's a very unpopular opinion, that on a certain level, on a certain degree, there were in fact things I could have done differently. If I'm honest, if I'm being vulnerable, if I'm being open about it, there, are, there were things I could have done differently, and that's a fact. If I had the courage, if I had the wisdom, if I had the experience to. And, I, and I, I really mean this, not in a way of saying all responsibility is on me, but there is on certain level some responsibility that I could have done differently. And I can't just completely ignore the role and the wrong I do play in this situation. I can't, and I, and I shouldn't as well. See, all of us in some way, we do understand the wrong that we have in a certain situation, in a time of need, the situation we're stuck in. We, we, we know, and often we blame ourselves, condemn ourselves. If you're honest and humble and vulnerable, you will often see the wrong that is in your part in the situation and in the time of need. And seeing that is not wrong or bad, you know, contrary to what the, the society might teach and say, it's completely not your fault, bear no responsibility. It's not that quite extreme. There is something, there is some responsibility, and it is not wrong or bad to see it that way. What is wrong and bad is when we condemn ourselves and when we hang these wrongs over our lives forever and ever and ever. That is what is wrong. And I feel like some of you, I don't know what you're going through, but you really need to hear this. What is, this is not wrong to see the wrong we play in the situation, but it is wrong when we condemn ourselves and hang these wrongs over in our lives. Because what we're in fact doing is we are assuming a position of a judge in our own lives, which we are not. Because there's only one judge, and that is God. Because only God is the giver of life and with the authority to judge lives. Not you, not me, not any of us. God is our judge. So, so yes, we have our wrong, but no, we are not here to judge one another, judge ourselves in this. What we are here to do is actually to recognize who the judge is and confess our sins to him. That say, God, I acknowledge my part, my wrong, my responsibility. Help me. It says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So you see, if God is willing to forgive us, who are we then to negate his forgiveness and continue to condemn ourselves further? In our time of need, we need to receive mercy that will help us. And obviously, we need His grace and favor to empower us, to sustain us, to strengthen us through the time of need because it might go on a bit longer than we can on our own. 
And we see what, what, the, what, what uh, Hebrews is saying here. We find this help as we approach God's throne of grace. And first of all, it's not just a seat. All right? It's not just a house. It's a, it's a throne. It's God's throne. And it is simply to remind us that we are talking about God who is king. See, he has this, this power, this authority in him over all things. And, and it's, it's, it's kind of like the closest thing I can think of is when you watch movies and then there's a presidential pardon, you know, an immunity grant towards a crazy criminal that has done all these things and the president just had to sign. And he has the power and authority to give immunity over the crime that is committed in this country. But God has way, way more authority and power that is trustworthy, that is everlasting as well. God is a king and there is this throne. And this throne is marked by grace. And with God, with someone who's so powerful, so much authority, that's all the reason we need to trust that his mercy is true and his grace is abundant. This throne of grace I love grace. One thing about grace is God's grace is sufficient. Always enough. We, we love this promise from 2 Corinthians. He said to me, my grace is sufficient. Sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. And, but if you, if you think of this word, the, the strength and sustaining power and the word sufficient. Let's think about that. Because we, we, I think sometimes we don't think about the word sufficient enough. Because sufficient, what, is, what does it mean? It means just enough. Just enough. It you know, so, sounds so weak. You know, just, just enough. Who, who wants just enough? You know, we, we want abundant. We want overflowing. We want just this humongous, gigantic. I don't know. We want, whoa. But then, just enough. It sounds so just enough. You know, sufficient sounds like Two dollar ninety nine, just enough, and 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 abundant. What we want is like two hundred million. You know, right, that's what we want. Not just enough. Two thousand two two ninety nine. But if you think about it, you know, two two hundred million. Great. Who doesn't want two hundred million? Two hundred million is great. If what you need costs less than two hundred million, right? If what you need costs less than two hundred million, two hundred million is great. Sufficient, on the other hand. Is sufficient. It is sufficient if what you need is two ninety nine. It is sufficient if what you need is four point six eight billion. It is still sufficient. It is always going to be enough, whatever the cost or the need that you have, and whatever favor you would require in your time of need. God's grace means He will always be sufficient for you, big or small. So let us, together, encourage one another, supporting one another, and holding each other accountable that in our time of need, we will bring each other and we will approach God's throne of grace together to receive mercy, to be forgiven of our wrongs, and to know that we are indeed forgiven by God as we confess to Him our wrongs and our responsibility. And that has to always be what is final and to receive that mercy and also find grace that is sufficient in all circumstances. And we can, as it says, approach all this with confidence. With confidence. As it says in the verse before what we just read, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to emphasize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are yet. He did not sin, yet he did not sin. Um, we can be confident because Jesus has walked in our world. We can be confident because Jesus understands the situations of our life and also the conditions of our hearts, you and I. Our hearts, our internal world, all that struggle, Jesus understands and he knows. And he knew what it's like. In fact, when he was on earth, he knew what it's like to be betrayed. Betrayed by the ones closest to him. He knew what it's like to be abandoned. What it's like to be ridiculed. What it's like to be mocked. To be on his own. To lose someone he loves. To be filled with this immense sorrow and pain. To be angry and indignant. To be unwelcome. 
to have a target on his back over his life. Jesus can understand us because he is one who in every way has been tempted just like us. And because he has walked through the life that we have walked through in every human way possible, he is able to emphasize what it's like to be in a time of need. He can fully understand that. And we see the one who understands and emphasizes is our high priest. What the high priest does is, is he comes to God on our behalf who can represent us fully because he understands us completely. And we can be confident of that because the Bible says we can. The Bible tells us who he is and we were singing about who he is in our time of worship with songs and music just then. And when you think about this high priest, you know, just how, how high is this high priest? Well, let's just go a verse before. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into the heavens, or heavens of heavens in some translation, and this great high priest that's right there is Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. It's not talking about heaven as, you know, like once you die, you go to heaven, that kind of, just that kind of idea. It's, it's talking about just right now, Jesus is at where God is. The idea of heaven is in contrast to earth. Earth is where we are. Heaven is where God is. And Jesus, he is right there. The one who is representing us, our high priest, is a great one, right there with God. Because not only has he walked this earth as a human, he was God, and then he went back, and he is the son of God. He is God. He is right there with God. And when he is there, he is representing us, as it said in Romans 8. Christ, who died, more than that, who has raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. It's a big word. Jesus is speaking for us. Jesus is pleading and praying on our behalf. You know, a couple of weeks ago, um, Elias started um, understanding. It's, it's amazing because we didn't know what she understands. And uh, so we just always talked to her. And one day I went to her and I was like, Diddy bao? Like, like, hug, cuddle, bao bao. I said, Diddy bao? And she's just like, I just throw her arms out, just like, oh my gosh, you understand. And then I start testing, you see. I, I come home, and she's, she's kind of a distant away. And I looked at her, I was like, did he bow? And then she's like, and, and then I was like, aw. So I, I, I kind of knelt down a bit. I, I knelt to the ground. I was like, did he bow? And he's like, and then she's like crawling over. She has like the weirdest way of crawling, but she just crawled over and then I, and again, and I picked her up. And you see, sometimes how we're being seen, how I'm being seen to her, you know, one of the ways for us, if you want to hold a kid, is to actually scoop down to her level. Bev, Bev would probably agree greatly. Like if you stand up, you're like, come to me. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bow you, you know. And you're probably like, who are you? You know, but if you scoop down to the level, when they see you at their level, when you draw close, Eli's like, yeah, 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 primary kids, still the same. You know, they, they approach you. And, and I wonder, in your view of God, where is God? If I say to you right now that if God is looking at you, imagine if God is looking at you, where would that God be? Oh, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Or would he be that you want to come close? Where, where is God? in your life. If God is looking at you, where is that from? See, a couple of months after the incident, we had a, a leaders retreat and encounter. And um, so we, we, we got together and we asked uh, Stephen, Y. Terry Mayna to, to just be with us, to just minister to us. And uh, we're, very, uh, we're very fortunate that um, um, Rob, um, Rob opened this place, a uh, beautiful place, uh, that we can be there, just fellowship and just sharing life together. And I remember the first night we got together, and um, Steve asked, me, asked all of us a very simple question. He said, if Jesus is right here, right here, 
what would you ask him for? What would you ask him for? And you see, I was just going through just all that. In fact, it wasn't just um, an incident like 2017. All the way since 2015, there was so much. Like I never imagined there could be so much pain, suffering, trial, all together in such short span of time. And, uh, and all the same time, I was just married, just started to encounter and all these kind of things. So he asked that question, and I was just thinking, I was just praying, I was just asking God. And uh, I actually, I was putting in this journal as well, and, and I found it the other day, and I was just writing on it. I said, what do I need from God? I said, God, I, I, need, I need courage. I need courage. Like, how can I get through this? God, I need your courage. Jesus, I, I need faith. I need faith to believe what is ahead. Oh, God, I just need direction. I need to know how to go so I can lead. God, I just, I need courage. I need faith. I need direction. I'm just thinking about it. And then, and then um, Steve said, Alan, you go first. I said, okay, I go first. And I was like looking at all these three. I just like, I need and what came out of my mouth was actually, I need help. And it's like, God, I need help. I, I actually just cannot. Like, what, what good is courage and faith and direction to me right now when I, when I just really simply need your help? I don't know why it came out, but it came. And once it came, it was just, it was just, it was just so much. It was just so much. And I remember at that moment, I was asking God, I said, God, where have you been? Where have you been? I need this help. Where have you been? And I can see myself as I ask this question, you know, it's just a very, very dark environment. I was kind of on the ground because, you know, just very dramatic. <laughs> like, I'm so helpless. I was on the ground and just very like mellow and dramatic kind of background. And I can imagine if I have a camera, you know, my focus is focusing somewhere far and high away. And um, I'm not good with photography or anything, but I think when you focus far and wide away and you start looking around, you know, that's how I feel I'm looking around. And suddenly like, I'm just like, God, where are you? Where are you? And I feel like I caught a blur in my vision. I'm just like, oh, what, what is that? I was like, why is it so blurry? And then I focus again and I focus back in. And I just felt like God was saying, I've, I've always been right here. You know, all throughout, I've always been right here. But you thought I was there and you're just looking there and you just can't see me. And then I just spent a, a long time with God just really just crying and just be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I didn't see you there. And just, you know, just, just having that time with God. And then, um, and then I was sharing all these things that's, that's been on me. I remember um, one of the person in the group, uh, Ben. Uh, ben, actually, ben actually said to me, he just said, Alan, do you realize that Without the ministry that we're all called into an encounter, we wouldn't, we wouldn't even know that there's this kind of need in our world. For maybe it will be another 20 years that we'll never see such thing if we just continue our way and not bother with what God has called us to. And what I want to share from us is because how much my group, my family, my church, supported me, helped me, encouraged me, held me accountable so that let us come to God to rest. Let us love one another. Let us gather together to encourage. Let us come to, the, to God's throne of grace. Let us. And I had my group that supported me and welcomed me that believed and understood me, that took me to God together where I could find my help, mercy, grace in a time of need. And I want to, sh I just want to go through a few things, you know, practically. And in, in Encounter, uh, over, the, over the lockdown, we started a few life groups. And uh, I want to encourage you to find a group where you can start building that relationship, finding a purpose that you, when you come together, and together you will come to God. That you will have a place that you can live out this let us. Because what we have, you know, on Saturday on service is great, but it doesn't build deep between your relationships. It's very one directional. It has its place, but in your life you need a let us place as well. 
And, um, and on, on, on Monday nights, there's a group, and uh, we ask each life group to think about their purpose because we don't just want to come together because I like you, like me, preferences and personality. We want to come together with a purpose. And this is one of the purpose of, of the group that we have. In this group on Monday nights, uh, 8 p.m. through Facebook call, they will read a passage together, silent, and they'll discuss. And the purpose is simply to study God's Word together, seek understanding, and share personal insights. That's what this group wants to do together. Uh, on Monday night, there's another group called Team Baked. I have no idea what that means. So you have to go there to, to know what it means. But they meet uh, on Facebook video call as well, 7.30 p.m. every Monday. Starts with a song of worship. They'll take turn reading the verses, 10 verses each, and then followed by discussion. At the end of the chapter, read two chapters every meeting. Sounds quite a lot, uh, but their purpose, um, they gave, he, the person gave a summary, read the Bible and be like Jesus, all right? So their purpose statement is to journey through a devotional group and deepen the understanding of the words of God, and so to grow in confidence, Christ-given identity. Um, there's, there's that other group, and... Um, we don't have a purpose statement yet, but we simply use Mandarin, all right? So, so, so we study the Bible together. We go through Luke, and, uh, and, and we speak in Mandarin. So if that is your jam, you know, Monday night, 7 p.m. on Zoom as well. Um, there's also a group on Tuesday nights, and their purpose is to empower people to fulfill God's mission in their workplaces through different expressions of God's story. Uh, and people will take turns facilitating. People who can open their house will open their house so that we can, you know, so people can come together. People outside of Christchurch can join through Zoom, and they will just want to have discussions and questions that is more surrounding and guiding their attention towards a workplace missional focus. And there's a group on Thursday nights, um, Fortnight, uh, about to help Christians better understand their identity as children of God. And there will be uh, scripture, and there will be studying of that, discussion, and sharing as well. Um, and there's actually a few more, uh, more private groups that has a purpose that is just for certain people as well, that they felt drawn to, that they want to do something about it. And, um, and for you, if you're looking at it, oh, I want to give that life group a go. Give it a go. Start forming, building, growing into a group of people of God that will have this let us moments together you know and, and if you look at it it's just like man i really have a heart in somewhere else i really see a need there's this mission field out there there's a purpose that's in my heart i want to see happening you can just start one and maybe there's just someone else there who's less you know it was not as you know brave and feel like i can do this and come up with, if you can come up with one maybe someone felt like that's me as well let's come together and make this a reality in our surrounding. So I just want to encourage you guys to give life groups a thought. And if we can join one, join one. If we can start one, start one. Because we want to see this coming together that comes towards God. That comes towards God. Yeah, I, th I think I'll just finish with, um, I actually didn't, bring it out, so I, I'll be paraphrasing, it might be wrong. I, I, one, one thing I love about um, Life Group is, is what Paul wrote in Ephesians 3, his prayer for the church. And he, he is saying, you know, that, that I, I pray that you, you understand the love of God. But he says that with all the believers together, that you may understand the love of God. Now, what I share today is my story and is my understanding of the love of God that is applicable in my life. I mean, none of you will say, oh, that, but it's a bad story. No, it's a great story. It's an amazing story. But it's one story. And you have one story. Someone else has another story. And together, you st we start building this beautiful picture of God's love for all of us. Because life happens in a way that you can't always have those experiences to know that expression of God's love but you have one another and together you can start shaping and building and seeing oh God you're so amazing and I just I just feel like today God wants to just surprise us you know the thing about grace grace is the thing that uh, by definition is when we feel undeserved 
something that you feel undeserved that you receive always comes kind of unexpected, you know, because if you don't deserve it, you don't think about it. If you don't think about it, you don't deserve it. When it happens, it's like, oh my gosh, where did that come from? That's, that's grace. And that's great, you know, undeserved, unexpected. And I feel like because it's unexpected, so often you miss out on God's grace in your life because you're not expecting what you cannot expect. You're not expecting what you cannot expect. But God's love is so amazing, so beautiful, so full, so powerful that it transforms. And you need a collective story to see that together so that you can start realizing just how can I start expecting the unexpected and start seeing the grace and the love of God sweep through your lives in every aspect, every direction that you look. So you start taking your attention to where God is with you, in you, through you, over you, everywhere, all around you. Let's start expecting the unexpected grace, love, and power from our God. Let us pray. Lord, I just thank you that your grace is so sufficient, so unexpected, Holy Spirit, I just pray that whatever we're going through right now, help us to be encouraged by one another so that we can say, let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. And even as I say this, I just feel like mercy is such a good word to be reminded of. We love grace. Grace is our love. It's beautiful. It's giving us something we don't deserve. And sometimes because of that, we don't like to think of mercy. Because mercy, mercy is recognizing first that there is a wrong, deserving of punishment, yet then we did not receive such punishment. And we don't like to think about that. But some of you, because of your lack of attention and understanding of God's mercy, you haven't allowed yourself to be forgiven. I want to say that you haven't allowed yourself to be forgiven as God has forgiven you. And I just feel like, I just really feel like there's a, there's a forgiveness of God that He wants us to recognize. Because on the cross, when Jesus died, He died so that there is a forgiveness of sin, so that God's mercy will show through and then there's the gift, the grace, the gift of the Holy Spirit. How can we receive a gift that comes and packaged together with a forgiveness that requires us to receive God's mercy? I just want to say to all of you on site, online, this word of God for you today, tonight, is simply, you are forgiven. You are forgiven as you confess your sins. God has forgiven you. So allow yourself to be forgiven as He has forgiven you. Receive it. Come and receive it. Come and find this grace in our time of need. Lord, we just thank you for this time. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your gentle yet powerful reminder to us. We thank you for your mercy, your grace, your love. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, we're going to stand up and we'll continue to worship. And for those who are online, uh, this is where we say goodbye. And we hope that you have this some time to think about what is being shared and that you're coming back again next week as we continue to journey together in this series, Let Us. I'll see you guys next week. But church, uh, let us just stand.